Okay, so this one is an atrial fibrillation. No, it's a normal sinus rhythm. Damn. Okay. Uh, this is a normal EKG? No, this is right ventricular hypertrophy. <sighs> Why am I so bad at this, man? Come on, man, you're not. You're just beginning to learn. And well, that takes time and requires you to have a systematic approach and practice a lot. And you haven't done all of that. <sighs> yeah, I guess so. But hey, you know what? There may be something you haven't done that really helps in learning EKGs better. And what's that? Learning the normal EKG by heart. But I already know that. Really? Okay, well then show me. Uh, grab that piece of paper and draw how the normal EKG is supposed to look like. Okay. Uh, so. All right. There you go. Okay, let's see. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. You see, the problem with learning EKGs is that most of us, when we were learning about EKGs, we had a class and our professors just showed us a slide with a typical P, QRS, and T wave, right? And so we saw that and we thought, okay, so that's how a normal EKG is supposed to look like. And then we started learning all sorts of pathologies, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not really how an EKG looks like. If you take a look at a real EKG, you will notice that most leads don't even look like this, right? And sure, every lead technically has the same waves, but you can't honestly tell me that, for example, these two leads look anything alike. Hmm. So that's the problem. And you know this. I mean, you probably remember that the way you ended up being able to, for example, read chest x-rays was by first really internalizing how the normal x-ray was supposed to look like. Once you had that mental picture, you had a reference point to compare everything to. And that made you able to pick up even subtle abnormalities. But in EKGs, you don't have that. All you have is, well, this. And no offense, but with this as a reference, even the most typical textbook EKG with some sort of basic pathology looks intimidating and confusing. Okay, okay. So what you're saying is that I should just memorize the normal EKG? Mm, yes and no. I mean, some memorization will for sure be needed, but I would encourage you to try to make it less about memory and more about understanding. Understanding? Yes. I mean, the EKG, just like most things in life, has some first principles. And you, if you really understand those first principles, you will notice that most of the findings in the EKG make sense. You're able to not only memorize them, but understand them. And it's not rocket science. You only need to learn like a handful of concepts for this. For example, how the electrodes in the EKG draw the impulses depending on the heart vector. Hmm. And um, how's that exactly? Oh, well, that's extremely easy. All you need to remember is that every time an electrical impulse, a vector is directed towards an electrode, that electrode will draw the impulse as a positive deflection. On the contrary, when the impulse or the vector is going away from the electrode, that electrode will draw it as a negative deflection. Okay, but how does learning that help? Well, again, if you understand that and you're able to complement that first principle with how the heart depolarizes, basically how the energy flows to the heart and how the vectors behave in the heart, you will realize that most of the findings in the EKG make total sense. For instance, you notice how this QRS complex in V1 is predominantly negative and as it progresses to V6, it becomes predominantly positive? Well, that's not a random arbitrary finding that you have to memorize and that's that. That's a reflection of how the ventricles depolarize. And if you understand how the ventricles depolarize, you're able to deduce that pattern. You see, the first thing that happens in ventricular depolarization is that the septum itself depolarizes. And that happens from left to right. That means that the vector in the septum depolarization goes towards V1 and away from V6. That's why you see this small R wave, this small positive wave in V1, and this small S wave in V6. Now, after that, the ventricles themselves depolarize, and although they both do this simultaneously, you can clearly see that the left one is bigger, so the overall vector will be going that way. And that explains why there's a big S wave, a big negative wave in these leads over here and a big R wave in these other ones over here. Oh, wait a minute. So that's why the QRS becomes positive in V1 in cases of right ventricular hypertrophy, because the enlarged right ventricle makes the vector points 
towards V1 instead of towards V5, V6. And so the leads over here pick that up as positive. Yep. That's the reason. And that's actually the other benefit of trying this technique because you not only develop a point of reference and you start picking up subtle abnormalities, but you also start understanding why pathologists look the way they look in the EKG. Wow. Are you telling me I can do this with everything in the EKG? Mm -hmm. Well, almost everything. And again, it's not that complicated. Uh, learning the first principles of the EKG basically comes down to learning these concepts right here. If you devote an afternoon to learning this concept, you can not only understand and really have a mental picture of how the EKG looks like, but, but also understand why it looks the way it looks. And then of course, you will need to practice a lot, develop your systematic approach, learn all the names of the signs that you will be picking up and learn the important details, the important exceptions, all of that. But that honestly, that's the easy part. The hard part, the part that almost everyone skips is this. Yeah, about that. Do you know where I can maybe learn all of this a little bit better and maybe practice a bit as well? I, I could probably use a better resource moving forward. Well, have you tried Lecturio? Over there you can find tons of tools to help you with this. There is, for instance, an entire concept page dedicated to the normal EKG. There you can learn basically everything, all the basics, all the systematic approach. You can also find uh, tons of pages for any abnormality you may want to review further, like AV blocks or tachyarrhythmias. There's also a dedicated course about a subject with a ton of interactive video lessons and clinical cases if you prefer learning that way. And hey, they even have active learning tools like quizzes and practice questions for you to test yourself and see if you're learning properly. So yeah, if you want to continue learning EKGs, just go to lecturio.com and keep improving your skills. Mm -hmm.